Hey there YouTube, it's Bo Brotherton with Better Together Life. Today, we are going over the full system. I get to share everything with you and just wait till the end because there's some things that I messed up on and I just didn't think through. So you gotta wait till the end. All right, so you're going to be seeing the main person that is responsible for helping me set this system up is Pete Van Dyke of Drought Proof Texas. Pete is our permaculture designer. Chip, you got to get out of here, buddy. He wants the ball. Like, he just is so all over this thing. And whenever we found out about this $3,000 rain and water harvesting rebate, once I found out that this was possible, Pete was the first person that I sent a message to saying, dude, will you come and help me do this? Because I have no idea what I'm doing. And he said, absolutely, I'll be there. And there's no way that I could have done this without him. And now that I've been a part of helping to do it once, I know that I could be able to help someone else with this type of system. It all starts with the roof, of course. So we have our seamless gutters, and then it comes into the downspout here. And what we have is a first flush system that goes all the way down. And we did it this way because we needed to have the system hold a little bit of weight on the bottom. I just wanted it to hang so that I could get a bucket underneath it. And Pete came up with the idea. I was like, you know what? You're probably gonna want this to go all the way to the ground to help support the actual pipe all the way. But because of the distance that the pipe has to go, to the dry system, to the tanks, this needed some extra support down here. The water will just fill up this first flush and all the sediment down here is gonna go to the bottom. And then the clean water comes up to the top. And then once it gets to the top here, it just slowly, nice and easy, goes over to the first tank. So all of this pipe is four inch schedule 40 PVC. So it starts with up here. We have this weird kind of T thing and I just bought a whole bunch of piping and fittings because I didn't know what all we were going to need. And this was one that worked. It, it possibly could have used something different, but it does the job. Then what we have going down to the first flush is we have just a four inch 90 elbow. And then from that elbow, what we have is a four inch PVC male to the female and that goes to a threaded pipe here and then what we have is a threaded pipe that goes threaded into this and this will allow us to take this off if we ever need to clean this out a whole lot then from that threaded pipe to a another PVC and this is a step down that goes from four inch down to one and a half and then this one and a half, this is a valve that we can use to let out the water. And I'll show you real quick. It comes out really fast. So it shoots out. Super strong. So you see, that's the water that's coming out of the first flush. I'm gonna turn it off because I want to be able to harvest that a little bit later. My buddy Josh from the Gander Flight YouTube channel, he actually had a really cool idea. He's like, Bo, why don't you just go ahead and cut this PVC right around here, you know, somewhere around this to where we can get a bucket over about that height, then do a T fitting to where we have, it, it attaches here and then here. Then basically I do this same system over here. And what that allow me to do is I can actually take this entire fitting off like from this uh, threaded, and I can put it into that T coming off here, and then I can have this to actually go to a spigot that I can turn that spigot better, and the spigot goes down. I can put a bucket under it and actually collect most of this water all the way down to this spot. Then whenever I need to clean this out from the sediment, all I would have is just a cap here that I can just take that off and I can just screw that on to be able to help clean that off. That way I can more easily harvest all of this water and use it for my garden. And all I'm wasting is just this little bit right here. Because I will say that this system, it works because it supports 
the whole pipe up here, but what it is not good is I can't get a bucket under it. I like Josh's idea to cut this and to redo it. So that'll be a future project someday. All right, so then we'll show you the pipe, how it goes over here to the first tank. All right, so you see right up there that there is a little coupler up there because we needed that because whenever we put this together, the pipe was kind of cockeyed a little bit. And so we needed to cut it up here and that would allow us to put the pipe straight in to the tank. Are you gonna let it fall? <laughs> nope. Dude, how do you get in the tank? In that lid right there. You can fit? Yeah. It's not very fun, but. This is what I was probably nervous about. Was like, Cutting a hole in this thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cutting a hole in the thousand dollar. Brand new tank. Yes. Yeah. It's just good to see someone do it first. I, those tanks we did the other day, I, I cut eight holes in Oh all gosh. <laughs> so why? Well, we had to do the overflows and the in, in, inlets. One for each tank, and there's four. You didn't plumb them together? They were at the bottom. Okay. But we had independent overflows for each tank. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Are we going to have that here or do you think? Eh? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So they can overflow faster and not like back up. Yeah, because then the water comes out the gutter or the top of the tank. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> idea. What is this called, Pete? Uh, that is a coupler. Okay, some With kind of hose clamps. It's a little coupler hose clamps for four inch PVC pipe. You can ratchet it so he just cut it with a with a, a hacksaw and strap it so that now allow us more flexibility to get this plumb and flush at the end of the tank as well as this one over here, which going down here will have the first flush. Now up here we did have a leaf eater designed into this system and I, that I got off of Amazon. It didn't work, like you couldn't spin the pipe. It was supposed to be able to design where you, we could take it like this and spin the pipe to move it that way. We couldn't get it to work. We, I bought two of them, neither of them would work. I'm gonna have to figure out something to do because I do need to screen this out. Probably what I'm gonna do is just get some hardware cloth and some kind of no seam like netting to be able to get that in here to stay because that's a bummer. I do need to seal this up. We don't have a lot of like debris from trees that go on here, but any kind of dust, or I could just get gutter guards all the way across. That's just a lot. So I need to figure out something for here. And then as you can tell up here, you can see those two screw top like entryways if I ever need to get into the tank and clean it out, like drain it and then clean it out, then I can take those off and hop in there with like some kind of scrub brush and then scrub it out, try to get like a, just a 
pressurized water hose or maybe a power washer to really clean it out and try to get as much water out of the system as we can with those two holes. Super easy to get in there. I mean, well, easy to open the lids up. I don't know how easy it would be to actually get into those. It seems like it would be really claustrophobic too. So yeah, what you would see here, uh, you can't really see it, but where this is, there is a four inch pipe, just like this, like a little insert about this long that is inserted into this and that goes straight down and that's where all the water goes. It comes nice and gentle over here and then goes in there. And this guy is great because when you can just tighten it just like this and there's no leaks on this thing. This thing is awesome. That was the thing that made me most nervous was cutting a hole into these tanks and that it just worried me. I've never done it before and I didn't know what to do. And he did it for me and now that I know how to do it, I feel more comfortable. And that just goes to a 90 down to another four inch PVC pipe that goes into the tank. And so really there's no possible leak. There's no light that comes in. There is nothing. This is perfect. This thing is sealed so tight. This is now how these two tanks act as one tank. Okay, I just need to get my... Uh... This is some circle. Oh, so this is the middle piece. We'll, we'll nudge this back in it. This tank over here away from this so we can get these put together. We're gonna try to get these tanks sliding together just perfectly. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> we got this. No, no problem at all. This thing is perfectly level Can everywhere. Can you bring me your uh, torpedo level? Like it's gonna go in. That's what she said. So what we're gonna do now is sort of nudge this tank a little bit closer to where it's like almost going in. Yep. And then we'll glue it, and then you'll be the one who pushes the tank. Yep. And I'm gonna slide the. We got it. This thing in. It's gonna... So let's go ahead. You ready? Go over there and let's see. Let's give me about two inches. We gotta have the alignment just right. I don't know. I'm trying. A little bit more. A little more. A little more. Okay. Right about there. I think that's gonna work. Oh, hello. Okay, go on the other side. Okay. I'm putting the glue on. Okay, push it in. No, more. More? More. 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 Right there. Okay. <laughs> Are you serious? It actually hit it? Wow. Good job. That is sweet. Don't try to do that by yourself. <laughs> that is awesome. The reason we did the two inch is so that these tanks can equalize whenever yep. they're filling. Yep. And we don't have to have two inch coming out. Sweet. Perfect. You just need yeah. one inch, right? Yeah. 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 You're right. Yeah. I think I'm actually going to put a uh, piece right here, another two inch piece, just in case, like, 
this breaks or something, then we don't have to like redo all of this. See, Deal. See what I'm saying? Yeah. These bushings, these reducer bushings, that you get all the stickers off. I got the sticker off. There's still a little bit of sticker ah, on there. Okay. So that messes it up. And so now we're going down to one inch mm -hmm. for this. the next valve. Okay, so what the water is going to do is going to go into the top and then it comes down here and then it's going to fill this tank up until it hits the very first bulkhead. So the first bulkhead is gonna be right here. And so that is just under 200 gallons. Like basically once it starts reaching to where this pipe reaches here. I, and so what we have is two inch pipes that fit all the way here. And then we have a shut off for each tank right here. And then it goes to a T that goes over to where I can actually harvest this water with a hose, which I'll show you here in a bit. It's hard to grasp how these two big giant tanks can act as one tank. Just think of a lake. If you ever see like a lake, you don't see some parts of the lake are higher than the others. No, a lake is always perfectly flat. Yes, there's waves in there, but the lake's level, no matter how much it raises and lowers, it's always flat. And that's exactly what this does. So the water, as long as these two valves are open, basically once the water is able to get into this tank, then it will find its own level and it will just raise and lower. I can show you with some photos here of whenever we can see the condensation because there's cold water in here and then it gets warm. You can see the line. They're the exact same level because just they're finding gravity and the pressure somehow just makes them even out. And so every time that there's 800 in one tank, there'll be 800 in another. When there's 2,000 in one tank, there'll be 2,000 gallons in the other. So then what we have is we go from the two inch pipe here, and this is insulated it's because this will hold water. Uh, and in times of freeze, you wanna definitely make sure that that is insulated away from any kind of uh, possibility of freezing. Then we go from the two inch, I think we down, then go down to a one inch, a one inch shut off valve here, and then we go to a little spigot with a garden hose. All right, I'll show you how the water comes out. There's not a lot of pressure, unfortunately. But this is it right there. That's the water, so it, it's just all gravity fed. Again, there's not a lot of pressure with it, but it does work this is gravity and of course if you had these guys higher up then it would work a lot better but you can just tell that from the gravity of where they are up there and then also the level of the tank so as they get more full the pressure that comes from this water hose will be more and more And then every system has to have an overflow because you don't, if these tanks get full up and there's no way for the water to get out, there's only one place for it to burst out and that's back up the pipe. And you will, ha you will have a big mess coming out and it'll probably ruin your gutters. It's just, you don't want that. So these have an overflow valve. Now the good thing about these tanks is they all come with the bulkhead fittings. This is a bulkhead fitting. I didn't know what a bulkhead fitting was and bulkhead fittings are not cheap. So I'm glad that these tanks come with them. Uh, but this is basically just what a bulkhead fitting is. It fits to inside the tank and it clamps to the outside of the tank and it has threads that you can easily thread into the tank. So but basically what we have is we have a male threaded in here and then that goes to the PVC and then we go out here. I think this is one and a half inch pipe here. So the overflow would come out and then it comes down and the same on this side. And then it comes all the way down 
And then I haven't buried this yet, just possibly because I haven't had time, but also because I wanted to be able to show you the full system is what we have is a 90 over here, an elbow, and then it goes another 90 elbow here into a T, and then these two connect right here. And then we go from this one and a half down to one inch PVC pipe. And then that goes under the ground, under the foundation of the tanks. And then it goes over here. And I'm gonna cover all this up eventually. And then it comes this way down here, goes underneath the house. And then that's that same pipe. Comes out right there for now. And then what we'll do eventually is we will tie in this overflow pipe into our outdoor shower, which is a, a project that hopefully we get done before the heat of the summer. And we'll tie all that in to a French drain that leads over here to our main little pasture where we pasture chickens and rabbits. And this will go into a swale, I believe, or something to where we can feed that all that water over here. Also, what I would love to have happen is that same location to someday do great water harvesting from our kitchen sink. I think that would be really cool. And our laundry room. Now, here's the thing that I wish it would have gone a little bit better. When Pete got here, he had a really good idea. Okay, so a slight change on this project. Pete had just, you know, this is why you want to hire a permaculture designer, Pete Van Dyke of Drought Proof, Texas. So this four inch PVC pipe, is it is not cheap, it is expensive. And he thought, he's like, hey man, the calculation of your of our roof catchment because we have so much deck roofing space which is more than our house we have 16 um, we have 12 foot by 48 on the front and 10 by 48 on the back he's saying that just the 10 foot by 48 in the house so everything that's on the back half from here and going all the way back is plenty to fill these tanks all right so here is the front of the house this is so ghetto, but it actually is working at the moment. This is not a good system. This is an IBC tote that we have. And literally guys, this is like the most ghetto thing ever is, this is just a piece of scrap, uh, seamless gutter that they left us. And I have this rigged up. I have a piece of board up here and then I have the downspout and I just screwed in a couple of pieces right there so that I could run the water from here all the way. And it actually works, man. Like there is probably like 100 or 200 gallons in this thing. Very, very ghetto, but it harvests water. That is super ugly and I gotta clean all that out, but it works. So again, what I wanna do eventually is run the same four inch PVC pipe and do the original plan and run that down and then run that underneath the house, and then I'll have to go up. It's gonna be a pain. It's not gonna be easy to do, but right now there's about 800 gallons in each of these tanks. I think it's gonna fill up, but really like I needed to, I want it to fill up faster. That's just being honest. I want it to fill up faster. And if we had those two connected, we would have been full up. Cause I wanna be able to get some of that water from our roof over to this pasture, which that could do it with those overflows, that pipe that goes underneath our house. Guys, it would have cost an extra like 500 bucks for those pipes, because forage PVC pipe, it is expensive. So what we would then do is have another downspout created here, and we can actually just run a normal downspout over here. And then on this side, we would get rid of all this stuff and we're redoing our little tower garden and we would have some garden beds over here, this side of the house, and all of this, that is east. So over here, this is where the sun comes up. This gets nice, soft, gentle morning sun. And then by the time it goes over to the west, all of this is in shade. And in the summer, guys, here in Texas, if you are getting western sun, 
all of your plants are gonna bake. There's just, you, you cannot keep them alive. It's, it's almost impossible. Everything dies. But if we create this little microclimate to where it gets only morning sun and a little bit of southern sun, this is going to be great over here. And so all of this rainwater from this side, once we create this other downspout, that half of that rainwater from the front will be able to be into this garden. And then the other half will go to the tanks. Alrighty, you guys, I am excited. This is the second to last week of our rainwater harvesting series. Next week is gonna be a Q&A. So put down all of your questions below and we will go over all of that next week. It'll be our final week of this series talking about rainwater harvesting. I'm excited once we're done with this series, we're gonna go back over and show you the pigs and doing electrical polywire. We rotate them now with electrical polywire, y'all. Like two strands, it's crazy and nervous. Like I cannot believe that these things stay in with just two little strands of electric wire. It's insane. Anyway. Next week, all of your questions, rainwater harvesting. There is nothing better, in my opinion, than harvesting the water, except maybe harvesting the sun. I, I'm excited to someday get solar panels, but right now we're harvesting water from the clouds. It's so cool.